And for those of you that are interested in what's inside the actual box, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Went to J-Car. Very nice uh, form factor. Well, as usual, chaos is reigning supreme here at the Art of Engineering, a place where art meets engineering. At the moment, art is meeting a lot of ham radio. It's like all my Christmases have come at once, and today we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing. It's always nice when fun stuff arrives in the mail and you've got something to look forward to. And I've got a lot of stuff presently on its way here. A lot of it coming from China, it's coming surface mail, so I'm going to be waiting a while. But some of this stuff has arrived by um, airmail and it's arrived rather rapidly, which is really quite a nice and pleasant surprise at this time of the year. Um, this is the QRP transmitter that I've been waiting for, the UBX transmitter. Uh, it's a kit form transmitter and I'm not going to build it straight away. At the moment I am presently getting the antenna sorted out. I'm also trying to get my license application done, but we're going to look at the, uh, the bits and pieces in this box very quickly. We're also going to look at this device here. It's a Nano VNA, a Vector Network Analyzer. Now this is a wonderful little piece of test equipment. It's got a screen on it. Um, it does all sorts of analysis of RF waveforms. It can inject a signal across a, a waveform from the um, down in the low hertz, maybe kilohertz, up to into um, a VHF, UHF territory. And it's uh, a very nice way, and a very sophisticated way actually, to check, check a, an antenna. So you can actually sweep the antenna for its given range and see where it resonates and what SWR you have at that point. So um, I'm not gonna go into the ins and outs of this device because there's so much stuff online, but when I do the antenna analysis with it, I will definitely show you how I did it and what I did and point you in the direction of uh, resources that I've used to understand it if I do actually manage to uh, get to the point where I understand it. It's a nice little shadow on my face there. Hello, my friends. As you can see, there is a lot happening. I've got a lot of stuff arriving and it's going to be a very exciting time here in the studio slash radio shack. So please, if you're interested in all things engineering and radio and just geeky stuff in general, and you would like to have it served to you with a little bit of artistic flair, please hit the like and subscribe and you'll keep abreast of all the wonderful things that are going to be happening on this channel. Onwards with the video. So stay put if you want to see some fun stuff that's arrived in the mail, especially ham-wise. Let's get to the, the bench and have a look at what we've got. You still haven't subscribed. Let's have a look at the, uh, the transmitter kit first. This was absolutely amazing from QRP Labs. Um, the QCX Mini, I kept saying the UBIT X, it's not the UBIT X, it's the, um, it's the QCX Mini CW transmitter. That's how it came in the box. All very nicely packaged. It is a kit that has components that need to be located on the board. I I'm, I'm, I've been told that all, yeah, all the surface mount devices are actually loaded in the board. Now, when I start building this kit, I'm probably going to have a look around and see if there's any resources already online because there's no point in me doing something that someone else has already done and if there is I'll point you in that direction um, but I will definitely let you know how it goes. This is the case. Now you could put it in your own case but um, I decided to buy the case. It's a metal case and it fits the transmitter perfectly and it's, it looks like it's anodized aluminium and just a very very nice uh, form factor. So very shortly, I will have a five watt transmitter with a small screen on it that will actually decode Morse. Now, if you're a ham like me that started in the 80s and then it has had a long hiatus away from amateur radio, I sort of left amateur radio, A, because it was my job and using radios had become a daily thing for me as a ship's radio officer working offshore oil and gas and also on the Australian coast. Link down below um, to my four A's at sea, and you can have a look at the video of, of all that sort of stuff. I've got a lot of stuff about that. This wonderful little transmitter is going to transmit five watts Morse code CW, and I'm looking um, forward to uh, uh, being able to plug in my homemade key, my homemade Morse code key, 
uh, that there is also a video for, and I'll put a link for that down below too, because I want to get people having a look at the content that I'm producing. If you like horse, why not have a look at my shirt? Link below. Um, I did put a little bit of effort into it. Uh, and um, they're all the parts, and you even have to wind the very small toroids that go into this device. So that fills me with a certain amount of terror. So it's quite a sophisticated build. Um, I have built stuff before I was an assistant to a test engineer for a little while, but still, it's going to be a huge challenge. So I'm gonna to have to be way, uh, way ahead of the game and not do my usual thing of rushing it and just organically approaching it. So this is something that I'm really gonna to have to think of getting in the right headspace to build. So that is the transmitter. The next object is the Nano VNA. Um, it's not in a box, I don't think, so I'm hoping that uh, it's managed to arrive in one piece. That would be nice. Oh, it is in a box, thank God. Okay, um, it comes with a number of cables and connectors. Some of those are through connectors, some of those are 50 ohm um, loads, um, connecting cables, all that sort of stuff. Um, I think this was like $180 or something, maybe less than that Australian. Now test equipment that would do this in the past, you need a signal generator, which probably would be way less stable than a, a DDS uh, variable frequency oscillator. Um, it's just amazing the leaps and bounds that digital technology, once upon a time I lamented the advent of digital technology. And I certainly do have a soft spot for uh, analog electronics and I think it has its place. It's elegant simplicity in certain applications is um, something that can't be beaten. And I think that uh, if you're an experimenter or a ham, it's really nice to look at the past and to look at the present and maybe marry the two and marry lots of interests. Um, that's why I like to play around with uh, creative aspects of engineering as well and art and all that sort of stuff. Make it exciting. Anyway, uh, a gold embossed box, very much like the Morse key. So um, that's, that's exciting that they've actually gone to the effort to, um, to make the box look that nice. And that's how it comes out. It's got its little uh, instruction manual. Now there's a heap of resources on how to use these things online. So um, lots of cables. You've got a, uh, some, some more connecting cables, a micro USB. So the connector kit I think is an, is an additional thing that you can add on to your purchase. And I always think it's handy to have all that stuff. A USB, uh, I'm assuming that's to charge the device. And this is the device itself. I mean, talk about tiny. And that's it, that's the device as it stands. So um, exciting stuff, and I'm really looking forward to, to booting that up. Now, I haven't got the antenna, the antenna's in the air, and um, I haven't got a transmission line to it yet, and I'm waiting for a capacitor, high voltage capacitor for the Ballon. While I'm waiting, uh, I am working on a software-defined radio. And at the moment, I'm not sure whether the actual detector is working on it. And what's fun about this is that I will actually be able to generate a signal using this. Um, and use it kind of as a small beacon and it'll allow me to see whether my receiver is actually detecting anything before I um, plug a large antenna into it. So um, that is the first uh, job that this is going to have to do and then it is going to uh, work out where my antenna resonates um, and help me tune it for the hand bands that I'll be using. I'm very interested in um, 7 megahertz and 3.8 megahertz at the present moment. Um, the transmitter I'm going to build, the CW transmitter, is probably going to be a very simple 3.5 megahertz transmitter, 80 meter transmitter. So I'm looking forward to getting um, that all happening. So that is the Nano VNA uh, ve Vector Network Analyzer. And um, it's really become, a, I wouldn't say an, an essential piece of test equipment, but it's certainly something very handy to have. Like I'll be able to plug this in once I build my L match and plug that into my antenna and I'll be able to analyze what's happening um, when I adjust my L match to see where resonance happens on my antenna. Once I work out where my antenna is actually resonant and get it as tuned as best as possible, I can then put my L match in front of that and it allows me to do adjustments. So exciting stuff. So that is the VNA. Another exciting thing that's arrived in the mail. But wait, there's more. You get steak knives with this. Now I am building myself an old school antenna tuner, L match antenna tuner. So I really wanted to get myself, um, and I needed to get myself a, a decent capacitor. Now these variable capacitors have become uh, a lot more valuable over time because there's not a lot of them being made. And 
you really have to look around to find one and I don't know what shape this one is in. I'm hoping it's in decent shape. I bought it second hand, it's a used part. So um, it might be absolute rubbish. I'm hoping it's not. But uh, if I can just, God, I tell you what, I haven't um, mucked around on the packaging. Okay, let's have a look, see what we've got. And this came from Poland. It is looking like, as advertised, working nicely. You can actually gain um, these two together. I'm trying to remember what the value was. It's, um, it's a decent amount. Obviously, with the gap between those uh, plates there, um, you're not gonna be putting hundreds and hundreds of watts or anything like this. But as luck would have it, I am presently 100% certain I'm only going to be operating QRP. I've uh, made that promise to myself. So I'm not going to be putting huge amounts of power into antennas and whatnot. I like the challenge of QRP and I also like the fact that you don't have to worry about antennas arcing to nearby objects and people getting uh, zapped and whatnot. And also uh, it mitigates issues with interference uh, to TVs and nearby electronics and all that sort of stuff. So RFI, radio frequency interference. You do not want to um, start your neighbors getting pissed off about you operating stuff that's uh, making their life a misery. So that's not to say that QRP is a guarantee against that, but it certainly reduces the, uh, the chances that you're going to have problems with that sort of stuff. Um, obviously, you can put in filters in, in transmission lines, that sort of stuff as well to try and stop it as well, a uh, low pass filter. But um, I'm gonna do all of that stuff, but I'm looking forward to making this part of a small antenna matching unit. It's fairly hefty, but um, I'm not planning on this being part of a portable setup. Um, this will make um, a very nice part of a, I'm gonna hand wind a, a, a coil and have taps on it, and this is gonna form part of the L-match antenna tuner that uh, I'll be building. So I'm very excited about that, and I'm happy with um, that arriving in the mail. I, I think I paid about 30 bucks for it. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really happy to have a good old fashioned uh, variable capacitor that uh, is going to have a new life as an antenna tuner. Went to JCAR, um, that's always a dangerous thing to do. And I just wanted to get some side cutters and ended up with all this stuff, uh, which is what always happens. Um, this is a, a nibbler tool. If you wanna do a, a, a panel, a cut a square hole out, this will nibble around the edges. So you stick that little head in there and it just takes little, it takes little, little nipple, nibble, nipples, little nibbles out of whatever you're trying to, um, the shape that you're trying to cut out of a, a panel. So you can see there, that kind of tells you what you can do with it. You can, you can basically make a hole of any sort. Now it's not the neatest way of doing it, but normally if you've got something that sits on the surface, has a bit of a face on it, like a, an amp meter or something like that, you can hide the ugliness of the hole. And if you're really careful, you can cut a reasonably neat hole with it as well. So a nibbler, um, something that uh, if, you, if you're gonna home brew is handy to have. Um, I've nearly run out of solder, so we got some, ourselves some solder. Some tough tape for insulating parts of the antenna that uh, have been soldered. I'm gonna throw that on to weatherproof a little bit. Bit of electrical tape just to do the dodgy uh, fix on things. And of course, what I actually turned up to buy, which was the side cutters, and I didn't buy the most expensive ones because I'm just a destroyer of tools. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of money on tools because I lose them, I break them, everything else. Last but not least, um, on our way to vote this morning, we passed a junk sale and I saw this device. It's got these very nice old school dials on it, old school. And um, also a, a meter, and I think it's um, an old ohm meter by the looks of it. And I don't know what's inside it. It feels like it might have a battery in it, which is no doubt will be completely screwed. Um, but I bought it mostly for the case. I'm pretty sure it's Bakelite. Um, you've got to be careful with Bakelite. I think it's quite toxic if you're going to drill it or do anything to it. So I will be very careful when I'm working with it. But I'm thinking, gee, old school transmitter to live in this box is um, probably a good use for it. So more than likely, I'm going to turn this into some sort of um, QRP transmitter or receiver. For those of you that are interested in what's inside the actual box, I'm glad to say that whichever battery was in here is no longer in here. And 
it's probably died at some point in time and caused a bit of chaos in here with the, the material but uh, I'm probably going to need to give that a nice clean out and um, you've got some high high wattage um, resistors there that may come in handy at some point in time and a, a little inductor and uh, variable potentiometer and I'm going to be interested to see whether that uh, meter is working as well. I might be able to put that to good use as well but uh, yeah something for the junk box. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Oh and I nearly forgot to mention um, also upgraded my multimeter. It's not a fantastic meter, it's a pretty simple um, meter but it'll do most of the things that I need to do. It was about 30 bucks online so really happy to have that too and because uh, the other meter that I had I found in the trash.